as Mariah mentioned, her father, my husband, died two years ago. He had been sick for a few years and his death was imminent, although we did not know the day or the hour. I often said that marrying Randy was the single most important decision of my life. He was God's greatest gift to me. And from our union were born our three children, Mariah, Nathan, and Josh. Our single most important mission in life was to help one another and our children get to heaven and gain eternal life. Our married life was not perfect, but we loved one another deeply. During our marriage, we adopted the number 333 as our special numbers that had significant meaning for us. The three stood for Randy, Monica, and God. We knew if God was a part of our lives and we followed his lead, then the rest would fall in place. We were married 38 years when he died, and we had started dating when we were 16. So most of my life, we were together. When Randy died, I thought my heart would break. Every day seemed like a blur. I would like to share a metaphor that describes this time after Randy's death. Being raised on a ranch, I knew fences separated sections of land. They started with a gate, and if you walked or drove far enough, you'd come to another gate. So the story goes. There were once two horses who lived their entire life together in a pasture. One day, one of the horses died, and for the next year, the horse that was left behind walked the fence, just walked the fence. That was exactly like me. And the fence wasn't a white picket fence. The fence was exactly like this barbed wire fence. This is the barbed wire. For the first year after Randy died, I was in a fog, just walking the fence. My faith carried me. God guided me as I clung desperately to the fence. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew if I kept walking, I'd eventually find the gate. I had wonderful friends, like my Sunday night buddy who waited for my invariable calls or my friend, the card lady, who has probably sent me 50 cards since Randy died, or my cleaning lady, who left me messages of strength and hope on my pillow, or Randy's friend, the banker, who soon became my trusted and invaluable friend who led me during the darkest part of my clinging to the fence because of my lack of knowledge in the financial world. During this time of grief, I wanted to stay close to my children, but they were grieving too, and they could not give me comfort and solace because those were the same things they were looking for. Basically, people can't give what they don't have themselves. Even the grandkids grew distant because they never knew if I would randomly start crying or why Papa wasn't sitting in his chair. Before Randy died, I wondered how I would ever go on without him. I asked him many times the summer before he died, Honey, will you promise me you'll always be with me? It was a great comfort when he promised me he would. So I want to share three specific times that I felt Randy's presence since his death. Two of those times I captured on camera or iPad, and I will share them with you. 
The first was one is conveyed with just a story and no visuals. There was a time after Randy's death that I felt survivor's guilt. Our three children loved their dad. He always had time for them, did fun things with them, and comforted them when they were sad. He never disciplined them. I did. So as Randy's health declined, I could see the great pain it was causing them. He did not want to leave them, and they did not want to let him go. For several months after Randy died, I felt depressed and guilty. I love my children more than life itself, and I have a deep desire to make them happy. So I began to think, how much better would it have been if I would have died first? And Randy would have lived on with them. That thought was with me continually until one day I said to them, I love you all so much and I'm sorry I didn't die first. They asked why I would say such a thing. And I said, because I know you loved your dad more than you love me. And that's okay. I loved your dad more than I love myself. Our children surprised me. A moment of healing happened. They said, Mother, we love you both. It was just that Dad was always the fun one. And you were the disciplinarian. You were the one who told us no. You were the one who continually reminded us not to do anything illegal or immoral. It was you who checked our breath when we came home. <laughs> Randy had told me before he died that he felt bad that he had not been a better disciplinarian. I fully understood. He was more like a teddy bear, not a grizzly bear. <laughs> this open and honest communication with our children opened a door that had previously been closed and controlled by silence that was like an elephant in the living room. If you have an elephant in your living room, I encourage you to name it so you can tame it. This willingness to communicate openly has made all the difference in the world to us. The second time I knew without a doubt that Randy was near, was a few days before we buried his cremains. Randy and I had always loved the moon. I sang all the songs to him that I knew, like Moon River as the full moon arched its way each month across the sky. And so when I had his cremains home for three weeks before burial, I took him outside and recorded myself singing Moon River one last time. After I sang Moon River, I returned to the house and sat down on our love seat. The ceiling fan began to blink off and on. The presence of Randy was so strong in his office that night. The light has never done this before and after this time. So ask yourself, just how close are the living to the dead? Is that what is meant by the communion with the saints? 
The third time, I knew Randy was keeping his promise to be always near me was last May 2018. I had just gotten out of the hospital after spending five days there. I had experienced great suffering as if a sword was piercing my heart. When I was released by the hospital, I went to the cemetery to be by Randy. It was right before Memorial Day, and I wanted to spend time with Randy. When I drove into the cemetery, I noticed the moon was in the sky. When I got to Randy's grave, I had a mini meltdown. It had been hard to be so sick without Randy by my side. So I reminded Randy, you promised you'd always be near me. Life is hard, so hard. At that time, I picked up my iPad to take a video of the cemetery for my ailing mother, who was not more <coughs> enough to come to the cemetery. And this is what I saw. Please note that it was in 2017 when Dr. Baxter was playing at Randy's burial and watched the balloon release. Some of the balloons were red and circular, and some of the balloons were silver and star-shaped. Now, one year later, in 2018, I was using my iPad to capture graves so my mother could see them. And in my viewfinder, this is what I saw. A balloon exactly like one of the silver balloons from one year ago was flying across the cemetery right in front of my viewfinder. St. John's Cemetery in Stapleton. <coughs> so later, I phoned Siri to find out the wind velocity. Siri said, the wind velocity as at most is two miles an hour. There would be no way this balloon survived a year through wind, hail, sleet, and snow and emerge all alone in the sky flying high and rising steadily toward the heavens in a two-mile-an-hour wind. Do you ever notice the sights and sounds of the what-ifs and the could-it-be's in your life? Keep watching. Miracles are all around us. God is near, and our loved ones are only a breath away. I am so assured that Randy is in heaven. I am also assured he is very near me now. He wants good things for me, just like Christ wants good things for me. I desire to be with God 
and with Randy. In Randy's memory, I had a waterfall built this past summer. It has Randy's eternity cross in it. <coughs> and a little boy statue with his <coughs> eyes fixed on the cross. And a little girl statue swinging her toes through the water. It's a great place to go at night and pray. For me, it's like a little bit of heaven on earth. Please listen as Mariah and her daughter Elise and I join the restful waters of Randy's waterfall as we long to be with him in heaven and for the coming of Christ. There is an urgency for me to get life in order and be mindful of his coming. We want to pass this urgency on to the next generation. This is our faith. This is our hope. This is our legacy. Please notice the rainbow in the sky. The rainbow reminds us God always keeps his promises. We pass on our hope of salvation to our children and our grandchildren, but not only to them, but to the children of the whole world as well. As we sing this song, we will be reminded of our need to pass on the hope of salvation to children everywhere in the world. Some of the words in the song will be in the children's native African language. The translation of the words we'll uh, be singing is, I know a day is coming. That's what the little African children will be singing. I know a day is coming. A day is coming. You will return to get us. I know, I know, a day is coming. Jesus the Messiah, one day, one day, one day, we'll see the King, one day. Soon and very soon.